Hi all, I have a nice positional game of leader to show you. This was against Protector. So this is in the Chesscom Blitz Cup 2018. Five minutes time control with two second increment per move. D4 from Leela. We have Knight F6, C4, E6, Knight F3, D5, Knight C3, Bishop E7. So Queen's Gambit declined territory. Bishop F4, Black Castles, E3. It's pretty standard stuff so far classical looking bishop e2 until this point protector uh you'd think like would like to keep things protected but actually played knight h5 here and there does seem to be a slight snag with this there's a lot of pressure on d5 in this position and luna is curious here isn't this pawn kind of unprotected uh so in fact, C takes D5 is played testing this. More usual in this position, uh, the most solid move seems to be A6. Uh, for example, A4, this kind of situation seems pretty even, very even there. So anyway, Knight H5, novelty move. C takes, Knight takes, is this some sort of gambit? E takes D5, Knight takes D5. So Lula does take that pawn. Bishop d6, g3. Uh, yes, it's good to hold f4. If knight e3 as an alternative, then black can just take that. So it's good to play g3. And maybe this was protector's idea that actually this is a bit awkward for white after knight f6. We have knight e3 because now black can actually prevent Leela from castling. So maybe this was the gambit intention. And there's also now a big threat here of bishop b4 check and then knight e4 if the knight interposes. So very dangerous, but a3 addresses that. Uh, we have h6. Bishop f1 kicking that bishop or asking it to be protected. It's protected by protector. <laughs> uh, on taking king takes this is fine uh, to do this for example king g2 is fine it's nice for white so queen c8 queen c2 bishop takes rook takes a5 and now there is an issue here if white castles queenside actually Lila didn't do that though if casting queenside it seems as though b5 is pretty dangerous for white uh, for example this scenario doesn't look very appetizing it's at least equal there is dangerous compensation white's king is not too safe on the queen side in general because there's more things to have to uh, protect against from protector okay so knight e5 puts the brakes on any b5 in fact encourages black to play c5 it seems here if black wanted to try and play a move as if white's castling like this all white does here is not castle queen so it's much safer to play f3 with the idea of king f2 this is this is a way of getting the king into safety for example queen h3 okay that could be a nuisance move rook f2 but again rook g2 and the king is getting into nice safety with an advantage here so there's not too much to worry about on rook e8 instead then just just queen here actually first hitting f7 and then king f2 it's cozy cozy enough so anyway c5 so not none of this b5 here and now it's more appropriate to consider castling queen side but first knight f5 hitting the bishop rook d8 and now castling queen side it seems safe enough we have c takes d4 here uh, clearly b5 instead is a disaster because of d takes that's that's horrible uh, i mean it's not a disaster why it's just got a big advantage there there's no problem there so uh, c takes d4 rook takes and queens come off and yes white is a pawn up still a pawn up but look at this the knight is forking two pawns so is this justifying black's whole opening uh well f4 is played now it looks as though the, this knight is holding against this knight being a, a nasty check so 
in fact g6 try and nudge the knight away however Lila has things under control here uh, just before going on from that though knight takes this position is quite nice for white uh, even though it's equal on pawns it seems as though white is in the driving seat here for example like this is is a nice position it's it's actually a big advantage for white the king is very very aggressive here b6 is weak as a strong pass pawn <coughs> pardon me so g6 and now h3 shielding that pawn of course and we have takes takes and now rook h1 and white seems to be getting leader seems to be getting her pawn back by force after rook h4 so still a pawn up in the driving seat again with a much more simplified rook and pawn ending so this is interesting how is this navigated to an actual winning position well king d4 is played very very nice offering b2 so again Leela is factoring in all the time quality versus material so even though it's it's four pawns each again but look at this f5 there's an idea immediately i mean which springs to mind of f6 and rook g7 check which will be winning like f7 so h5 rook g5 king h6 rook g8 king h7 but now rook a8 and there's very very dangerous ideas here of potentially queening the pawn uh so it's uh you know got it's guided by the rook so this is very dangerous we have b5 uh here king e3 king g7 rook a7 with ideas of e6 sometimes now king f8 f6 threatening checkmate rook a8 checkmate king e8 check rook b7 king a king e4 now check king e5 check king c6 check now taking here yeah why did black get desperate to do this well it is a pretty bad position uh there is there is king c6 happening anyway even if the king wasn't prompted so okay so this taking on b5 rook c3 now check and then threatening checkmating again after rook c8 will be checkmating taking this pawn off now leela has got table base integration so it's it's nice to see this it has to be played very accurately to win this to avoid table base draws as they say all rook and pawn innings are drawn was it tarish that once said that so we have king d7 on rook takes g3 here actually it turns out this position white can get the king to f5 with a big advantage so king d7 check check here and now this is very interesting in fact we have a4 so keeping that a pawn king g6 now protecting f7 rook e8 now setting a tactical trap if rook takes then there's rook g8 check winning that rook so that can't be taken king f5 but now e6 very very nice it seems very very accurate play here to actually play e6 simplifying the position by force yeah it's actually simplifying by force this e6 uh if f takes then f7 is is queening sorry pardon me let's just go back there go back to this position so uh if f takes e6 f7 is queening so what happens now after e6 well we have king takes f6 e takes threatening to queen so in this position leader plays a really accurate move which you might think is just about material this pawn in fact it's providing that force field against the king uh black actually plays check here king c6 now rook takes g3 is played this position position requires total precision leader plays a5 if rook takes h5 has been played this is just the table based draw by the way of the checks total precision is needed letting black keep that pawn so 
yeah leader plays a5 keeping the win chances alive check now a6 king f6 uh, it's interesting to consider what might happen on rook h8 let's have a quick tour of rook h8 here uh, this also requires total precision with the rook dropping back just in time before the king can actually support that pawn just to snap off this pawn so here after rook h2 we have to snap off the pawn with rook takes to keep the win because if we play king b7 then the king's in time and it doesn't matter about us queening because that's just a draw uh, so total precision is needed in these rook and pawn ending scenarios uh, and so let's see so king f6 in the game but let's take this further the game continuation now a6 king takes e5 was played in the game continuation which allowed leaders queen against rook and pawn now here let's have a look at rook h8 because there's something extremely fascinating about this position which i found out um here can you see the only move which wins for white and when i say only move i believe it's the only move that wins for white in this position so brush up on your rook and pawn endings with this delightful position <laughs> Uh, rook and pawning is the most frequent us club players will get so this is fascinating uh, there's elements I'll give you some clues there's elements of of shielding but there's also there might have to be an element of bridge building uh, and this next move ticks both boxes shielding and bridge building so really elegant and in fact only move to win this is actually uh, rook c5 it ticks both boxes it stops the king coming down the board and it could also help shield the, shield the king very usefully uh, just before we get into rook c5 let's have a look at rook e1 as an attempt just h4 and then the king comes up and that's a draw the king's just going to support this pawn and you might think well doesn't rook d5 at least tick the shielding box it does but look at this if the king hasn't got a bridge to be a bridge uh, facility there's this check which is really annoying it's just totally annoying it just it just makes it a draw in fact if white has to yeah it's if white moves the rook back then the king's coming up to draw so yeah there's actually no time now to repair the situation because uh, this pawn's yeah too dangerous so it's the only move which ticks both boxes in this position I found this fascinating <laughs> is actually yeah the move rook c5 but leader with table base should will play this I hope I would hope in this variation so now look at this scenario h4 king b6 h3 king b7 h2 then we come back to be able to snap off the pawn right on h2 we just round up the pawn as mentioned on check here sorry this is a really quite tricky so tricky to get this right uh even the presentation is right rook c7 in this position bridge building in this particular position so black is only two squares away and if black now takes on c7 then look at this it's just lost by a hair's breath white queening stopping the h pawn uh, so yeah there's one of only two moves there's two moves which win in this position okay so rook c2 just draws because of king f5 rook c5 with the shield uh, wins here because we encourage the pawn there we're shielded now rook c1 to eliminate the pawn by four so king g1 rook h1 we're taking the pawn uh, there was also rook c3 as well here rook c3 to eliminate the pawn uh, now if h2 yeah we just come to eliminate the pawn and the king's on f6 here uh, so 
and if as an attempt for perpetual check here rook c8 in this position yeah and we're, we're just in time with our queen over there so super tricky stuff <laughs> so we'll go back to the game continuation now anyway okay but anyway a7 and we get queen versus rook scenario now rook g6 check and the king just comes up to help the queen and the first stage of this is to take that pawn off so the king and queen converging to try and take that h pawn off and it happens pretty soon round about here yep this is the point where black is losing that pawn now and separating the king and rook can be tricky with absolutely best defense but leader with table base integration thankfully <laughs> is managing to work this one out even with the absolutely best computer defense here to separate out the king and rook it can be tricky if you're playing it against absolute best defense but here yeah the king's been put into a corner and now the rook drops and that is the end of that really and it carried on a bit until checkmate okay so this game had a very strange gambit from protector leaving a pawn unprotected <laughs> yeah and um the compensation wasn't that convincing uh there might have been a compensation line if white was too quick to castle queenside with b5 however with knight e5 then prompting c5 things were very different casting queenside queenside was fine the end game was fine uh, white was recollecting the pawn with interest and was always in the driving seat in all the end games it seems so a uh, fascinating kind of technique end game uh positional game so hope you got something from this comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much